It's the tumultuous year of 1812 and the winds of war swept across the Northwest Territory. And a man with a vision named William Hull saw beyond the clash between the Americas and Britain. He recognized the need of a lifeline of an overland route from Ohio to Detroit, cutting through the wilderness of the Great Black Swamp and crossing water features such as the Maumee River like a taut lifeline stretching in the face of impending disaster. This was the birth of Hall's Trace, a dusty trail that transcended its own physical form to become the vital artery pulsing with the lifeblood of a new nation. This is Fort Meg's historic site near Perrysburg, Ohio, and we're near the route of Hall's Trace. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. The channel's Restless Viking. Let's explore this lifeline. It's the spring of 1812 and with tensions mounting, Governor Hall of the Michigan Territory is appointed to be General Hall of the Northwest Army of the United States. And he's given the mission to invade Canada from Detroit. The only problem for Hull was is that they couldn't really resupply for Detroit because the British and the native Confederacy controlled all the water supply lines to Fort Detroit. So General Hull traveled to Ohio to meet his army. And the thing is, is there was no road to take from Fort Detroit to Dayton, and he intended to change that. And Hull knew that a road needed to be built, so he started in Urbana, and he started building a road north. And the first place he had to build the road through was the Great Black Swamp. Now, the Great Black Swamp is a hellish place where horses and wagons basically just disappeared. It was full of disease and full of hardship. Today, it's dried up and drained. But back then, it was hard to get through. So this road that they had to build, they had to build using a technique called a corduroy road where they would lay logs side by side and then cover them with dirt. Now you can imagine, this is a 200 mile trail that they had to build by laying trees side by side through an, a, a swamp that's about 50 miles wide and 120 miles long. And they did this without the benefit of draft animals and just hand tools. And I'd be like, Poppins, what time snack? I don't want to do this anymore because they did it for a couple months. So they started building the road north and then they got here to the Maumee River. We were just at Fort Meggs, which is down that way, probably five or 600 yards. But here is where they actually crossed the Maumee River and where they built the crossing on Hull's Trace. Talking to the history director at Fort Meggs, the army actually stopped here and they bathed for an entire day because this is the northern edge of the Great Black Swamp. So they were tired, dirty, they weren't feeling good, so they spent the entire day here at the Maumee River bathing. And then they crossed the river and they marched through town. Urbana's about 100 miles south of here and basically they went through probably 50 miles of regular road building and 50 miles of laying logs side by side every day and then covering with dirt. And the river and streams that they crossed required bridges. So you can imagine with hand tools, building a bridge across the river was no easy task. So basically Hull's army and the Michigan militia both built a 200 mile log road in just a couple months in the summer to some unforgiving wilderness. It's really amazing what our ancestors accomplished a couple hundred years ago. For some reason, cops are following us these days. I don't know. Maybe they're just fans of our YouTube channel. And up here in the Detroit area, Hull put the Michigan militia to work building the road back down to the south while they were building the road up to the north. Now, most of the battles during the War of 1812 in the Michigan Territory were actually fought exclusively, all the major battles, along Hull's Trace. 
Also, when Hull got to the Michigan Territory, the Michigan militia had already built the road in that area, so he could quickly advance up the road toward Fort Detroit until he got here to the Huron River, where they were starting the bridge, and it was kind of the last link in connection, I believe, for the road to be completed, so when they got here, Hull's army helped them complete it, and the road was finished. And today, we can see how amazing it was that they built this 200 mile road in just a couple months. But here's the crazy thing. If you're on Jefferson Road, where Silver Creek and the Huron River cross it, the amazing thing is, is you can still see the logs from that original road 200 years ago. These are the logs laid down by Hull's army and the Michigan militia. I can't get over the fact that they cut these down with hand saws and moved them by hand. Like when you and the kids did uh, a corduroy road, you use the truck, uh, a chainsaw, and then the truck to haul them. So I can't imagine doing this for 200 miles. To think this is the first Michigan interstate. Thousands of warriors walked on those logs and probably a few politicians. And after the war, early settlers who couldn't afford passage on a ship took the road. Those logs have witnessed the forced relocation of natives, the arsenal of democracy. It even became part of the Dixie Highway and Southerners who headed north looking for work in Detroit factories. It passes by Bessemer steel shipyards and factories that helped build a nation. This road has seen most of our nation's history. Thanks to our YouTube subscriber, Rob Squires, who made the suggestion from Hall's Trace in Brownstown Township, I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. Thanks for exploring Hall's Trace with us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>